has called the Wildcats for too much time. So they'll be assessed a five-yard penalty. Back for the Trojans. Harold Stevens, the single safety. What's a seven now for the center? Again, Gibbs is the deep man to do the punting. Good snap. Here's a kick. He gets it off. The short kick. And I believe it got out of bounds. Has gone out of bounds over on about the 26 yard line. But right now the new Craig Trojans will have it. First and ten here in the first quarter. There are uh, eight minutes and 32 seconds here in a part of the ball game. Just into the first quarter here in the center. Low overcast evening. The temperature rather ideal for spectator sake here at the ball game. Uh, the ground a little soggy, not really wet. In the handoff, first man through. Hit for a bad yeah, game. I believe that was Harold Stevens. In on the tackle for the center, Doug Wolf. Oh, pick up of the play of about two yards. Second down now and eight for the Trojans. Again, Scott Trochek, the quarterback. Now he slots calmly to the left. Very tight. Here's the head off. Going to Stevens again. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Again, the man initially who turned that in was Doug Wolf. Number 74. All he did was have it by the trophy. However, he held him up long enough for a couple of his teammates come in and knock him down, pick up on the play of about a yard, and that yard was gained entirely on the ability of Stevens as he was hit behind the line of scrimmage. And he should work his way forward. So now big play for the Trojans. Third down, long seven. Again now out of the wishbone. Scott Proshek, the quarterback. Called the play on a quick opener against the Bezek. And he goes hard, however, he will be short of the first down. Again on the tackle, Doug Wolf. Now there's a couple of other Purple Wildcats. 64 in on the tackle. Tom Yurt. Where, I guess, the way that pronunciation goes. And now the official has a timeout, which I believe they will measure. No, they will not. They're going to run it as a fourth down. Short yardage, however... Back to kick, Bezik, deep for the Wildcats. Again, their co-captain, Jeff Gibbs. Here's the kick, a good end over head kick over the head. Gibbs, yeah, he loses the ball, chases it all the way back. On the fire of the field, being pursued back there. A diving tackle missed him, and now he's knocked down. I'll try to pick up that number. I believe it was Rodney Sire, the man responsible to get him down. I read the first man tripped him up. Couldn't pick that number up on the fire of the field. However, a good punt by Al Bezik. And now the Wildcats are deep in their own territory. And we will wait to find out what yard line they are on. As again, I say they are on the deep end of the field. And six minutes and 44 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And they're on one yard line, so you can see just how close that was to being knocked in for a safety. Now the keep by Gibbs. Picked up about two just on a quarterback sneak. Great dive pattern. Trying to get out, getting a little air. As the Wildcats are deep in their own territory. As the clock continues to run now, just over six minutes remain here in the first quarter. Hadley Center, Florida's ball ballgame. Now wide for the Wildcats. Toby Pudwell is a call again. Gibbs keeps the ball again. Dives straight ahead. Picked up about two more yards. And on the tackle, Pete Bender for the Trojans. Also helped out in there by Gary Lucas. So now it'll be a third down situation for the Wildcats. Again, I say the Wildcats have won their first three ball games this season. Last year, last week. By a 41 to 6 margin over Arlington and their first two ball games over New Richmond. There's a slant and a keeper. Morrow was the ball carrier and might be very close to a first down. Again, 
They are testing the left side of the new Prague line. Marvin Dyke again in on the tackle for the Trojans. And we will have an official timeout here as we will measure. And here we have five minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And the score, New Prague Trojans, nothing. And the Center Wildcats, nothing. We'll return after this timeout. The ball on the 11-yard line now. Just over the 11-yard line where it's a first down for the Wildcats. Again, Hoodwell looks to the right. The call on the round end. And still, the ball will have to pick up the numbers. Appeared to be just more of it. And a tackle for the Trojans. Scott Prochick, there was a pickup on the play of three yards. Ball resting now out around the 14-yard line. Where the Wildcats will have it. Second down and seven. In the first quarter, no score in the ballgame. Now Footwell will split to the left. Quarterback calls now on the option. Pitches out. Gives to one of his running backs. Now he cuts in. Has somebody room for That was Dean Traxler, who, according to his coach, head coach Jerry Walscott, will see limited duty. Uh, Traxler has been running well for the Wildcats. As a leg injury, and I do not know the extent, however, he is supposed to see limited action. However, hey, he has been in the ball game. In on a play of five yards. Here's the call and the give. Goes to Morrow. Jerry Morrow picked up about three yards. Hit by a host of Trojans. Wormus Cushion was the, probably the first man to hit him. Helped in there by Tommy Reebok. Ball out now to about the 27-yard line, where it's second down and seven for the Wildcats, who are penetrating, not to a great extent. However, they are moving the ball against the Trojans, something the other ball clubs in our first three outings have had a hard time doing. Here's the handoff again, and piled up at the... Well, not piled up, really. He got loose. Fear that he was knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. However, his forward progress takes him almost to the 30-yard line. And on the tackle, Francis Mishek, helped out by his teammates, Terry Conley, also in on the tackle for Dupree. Third and three now, big play for the Wildcats as they are moving the football on the ground against the Trojans. So far, Gibbs is not elected to put the ball in the air. Again, he sends his wide receiver, which will be put well to the right. Here's a call now. He's back looking on the rollout. Soft pass. Met for number 32, Traxler, thrown over his head, incomplete. And Traxler had some running room. I'm sure he would have had enough for the first down. However, it was thrown over his head. Good pursuit by the Trojans. As Gibbs selected on the rollout, it appeared that he could run the ball himself. Like to throw it incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down back deep for the Trojans. Harold Stevens is a snap, a good snap. Gets the boot away. Semi end over and kick taken on a fly by Stevens. He avoided the first man up there footwell, but then he was cracked down in on the tackle for the Wildcats, Tim Kelly. And now the Trojans have the football for the first time in good field position. This is their second second offensive try. Ball over the midfield stripe, now into the center territory on the 47-yard line of the center. Again, out of the wishbone, Scott Prochick then Snow Heights, far to the west. Here's the call, and a first man through. Steven. Check that, it was Al Bezik with the ball carry. Picked it up, uh, picked up about four yards on the play. So it'll be second down and six now as the clock continues to run. There's two minutes and 24 seconds remaining here in the first quarter at the center. Heavy overcast, intermittent rain. However, the temperature has warmed up to the point is where it is very 
very comfortable for the spectators. There's a call in there with the mix up, and there's a flag in the play. Conley. And uh, I'm sure the Trojans will be assessed for a motion penalty because there are people moving long before the ball was snapped. Now they're talking to one of the captains from the center, Ms. Gibbs. Jeff Gibbs, 170 pound senior quarterback and defensive back for the Wildcats. It is a motion penalty against the Trojans. The ball back now, almost at midfield stripe. Second down now, out of the huddle. The center for the Trojans, Catterlick, over the ball. Now Solheide will spread far to the right. Here's a call by Prochek, Speeds back, has some time. I look, he throws a long pass, meant for Reebok. And he threw it over the pass. Covered back there by Toby Pudwell. However, Reebok did appear to get loose, and the pass was just overthrown. Now, the field faces here from west to east. And the Trojans now are going to the east and have the wind on their back. So, uh... I'm sure this will assist Scott Proshek, and he had good protection, got the ball off. However, just overthrew his receivers. So and now, third and about 12 for the Trojans. Now they'll split to the left in the slot. Here's the pitch out going to Stevens. Has a blocker in front of him, cuts in, has some running room. Back down. He'll be short of a first down. However, he picked up good yardage. All down to about the 39 yard line. And on the tackle for the Wildcats, Craig Bartlett. All down on the 39 yard line now. The, the Lambs goes to the sidelines to see what head coach John Bush for the Trojans elects to do. Now back to punt will be Al Bezik. As evidently Coach Bush feels as though the thing to do is keep them back in their own territory. Here's the kick by Bezik. He tries to soften it up and he does. A good kick out of the wind will take it into the end zone. So the ball goes in for a touchback and be brought out to the 20 yard line where the Wildcats now will have it. First and 10. Just under a minute remaining here in the first quarter. Now into the lineup for the center, Jerry Morrow. 160-pound halfback, sophomore. And we have a timeout on the field. So with the score here in the first quarter, the new breaks Trojans nothing and the listener Wildcats nothing. We'll return after this timeout. All right, we're back to the action again. This Gibbs, the quarterback, handoff goes to one of his running backs. Again, they are at the far end of the field. Try to pick it up. I believe that was Traxler. Check that. 22. Reynolds was the ball carrier. Kirk Reynolds. I may have been wrong. Originally, that may not have been Traxler. Now, again, there at the far end of the field. Number 22, Reynolds, I believe, has been the ball carrier. Traxler, who, as I said before, has been hurt. I don't believe has been in the ball game. Here now is Gibbs. On the call. The handoff. To the right side, trying to cut to the outside. Reynolds again, most of first down into a tackle for the Trojans. Stevens also helping out Terry Conley. So now they'll place the markers, which appear to be about a foot short. There is the end of the first quarter. So here at Lucina, after one quarter of play, and the score, the New Prairie Trojans nothing, and the Lucina Wildcats nothing. We'll return after this timeout. All right, we're back to the action here. It's third and less than a yard for the Wildcats. Here's a call by Gibbs and a hand. He goes for the first down. Diving over the Duke Craig left side. He's on a tackle for the Trojans. Down three box. Red Holtz was the ball carrier, and he has the first down across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. It'll be first and 10 in the center. Again, 
Le Center, without a loss, having won their first three ball games. Beating Arlington and New Richmond, I can't remember the other ball club they have beaten. However, they have been uh, very dominating so far this season. Again, Gibbs has Woodwell to the right. Split back. Now the fake. And he's looking. And now the rush is on. He gets the ball away. Good pass down the sidelines. And Woodwell was the intended receiver. However, he couldn't get to the ball. The good pass by Gibbs. Uh, throwing well. Just overthrowing. And now with the change of quarters, why the Wildcats have the ball with the wind on their back. And uh, it's a very uh, pertinent factor as far as uh, the kick and the passing goes in this game. Because there is a good win. I would expect it to be in the nature of 15 miles an hour, which has a quite an effect on a pass or a punt. Looking down and 10 now. Wing to the left. The Wildcats on the rollout. And keeping the ball is good. Puts his head down. He felt it under the And he has to move to the inside. He's still going down in the it was a big man. One of the Georgians had him down after about a four-yard gain, and he just took the tackle. And the penalty flag, though. However, we have a penalty flag on the play. Now the officials are talking to Tom Reebok, who is one of the co-captains, and we're discussion for the Trojans, and it is against the Lipson and Wildcats. A big, costly penalty to the Wildcats. We did not get an indication as to the nature of the penalty. Now the walk-off, it is a big penalty, 15-yarder, back deep to about the 17-yard line. The 15-yard uh, penalty, I believe. Offensive holding against the Wildcats. Only penalty against the Wildcats. So now, after a big gain, I'm not certain, but I would imagine that he was down inside the Dupre 30-yard line as he had a big gainer, the quarterback on the keep. Second and 25 now for the Wildcats. And Woodwell spotted to the right. Nine back looking. Here's the pass down the middle. All alone is Ronnie Shaker. He has the interception for the Georgians. Now he gets to the outside, and he's melted down. Ryan Schenicker, who was all alone out there, the pass overthrown again, and the quarterback, Jeff Gibbs, overthrew. Actually, he had a flood pattern to the left side, and about three receivers out there just overshot the whole work. Ronnie Schenicker, all alone, picked the ball off. Now, I think there was a uh, clip on the play. The indication is that there's another penalty, a clip on the play. It is a clip against the Trojans. As another, another penalty flag. However, the Trojans still retain the football on the interception. So the ball will be placed at about the 42-yard line for the Trojans. Now have it. First and 10. They have about 10 and a half minutes remaining here in the second quarter. There is no score in the ball game. The Wildcats uh, evidently they have a pretty sound football team because they are the first team this season to be able to be successive in moving the football on the ground against the Trojans. Here's a handoff. Six over given to Al Bezik and he plows over the 40 yard line. Ball resting just inside the 40 yard line. Pick up on the play of about four yards will give him give him four yards. Second down and six now for the Trojans. Out of the huddle. Proshek, the quarterback. Wings him to the right. As so right, far to the right. Here's the call and the pitch out. Going to Stevens. Tries to the cut to the outside. Now he cuts in. Picked up about two yards. On the tackle for the Wildcats. Doug Lukish. Also in on the tackle for the Wildcats. Timmy Blaschko. Got close to a yard. It'll be third down and five now for the Trojans. Now Stolheis will split to the left. The Trojan backfield goes into the wishbone again. 
Bezek, Conley, and Stevens. Now the pass. Prushik has a man over the middle and good right over the head. Now the rebound. Rebound. Didn't seem to have time to turn around or didn't execute in time to see the ball. Just a little hook in pattern where he goes down and just curled. And now Prushik decides to have a timeout. So with the score, New Pride nothing and the center nothing. We'll return after this timeout. All right, back to the action here. Third down play. Big play for the Georgians against Solheit. Far to the left. There's the handoff and hit behind the line of scrimmage. Al Bezek. No check that. Terry Conley with the ball carrier. I'll be delay. Backed up in there by number 73, Gerke. Also... Three or four other Wildcats as uh, Proshek didn't seem to fool anybody. And the Wildcats have proven so far in this first half that uh, they are not vulnerable to any type of running execution by the Trojans. They are a sound football team. Here's the play by number 30, the running back. As the play has lost the ball on down. I'm on a Trojan third down. It was fourth down. Coaches have turned the ball over. The first running play by the center, Jerry Morrow, 160-pound sophomore halfback, picked up about five yards on an in run. Knocked down in a play by Wormus Kirsten. Also helped out in there by Steve Bednar. So now it'll be second and five for the Wildcats. Again, Footwell to the right. Foot running back for the center. Here's the call. Now the handoff going again. There's a fumble on the play. Loose football. I believe the Wildcats have recovered. Yes, they have. On the ball for the center, number 64, Tom Muir. Good crunching tackle by one of the Trojans. I didn't pick up the numbers. It'll be a first down for the center as they are close to the 45-yard line. And the clock continues to run. There's six minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the half. No score in the ball game. Now Gary Lucas comes out for New Craig. And in the ball game. Mark Lucas, brother Mark, here's the call now on the rollout. Keeping the ball is Gibbs and he is cracked down. It was Bedner. Steve Bedner in on the tackle for the Trojans there. He played that particular play perfect. Bedner all the way, rolled him down. Pick up on the play of about two. It'll be second down and eight. As Gibbs on the option roll to the left side. Tried to run the ball. Got a couple yards. Second down. Close to a three-yard gain. We'll make it second and seven now. Again, Putwell in the slot to the right. The veer in the backfield. Here's the rollout again. Gibbs it keeps the ball. He's being chased. And Ribach. Oh, now he has the last run. He picked it out. Gibbs actually threw that ball after he was hit. Got it out to one of his running backs. Jerry Moyle and Jerry, after being knocked out of bounds, but not before he had picked up about four yards, so it's going to be a gain on the play, close to four yards. Third down and a long four for the center now. Again, they are going to the east with the wind on their back. And uh, this could be an important factor in this ball game. Here's a call by Gibbs. The hand out the quick over to the outside. Morrow oh, tries to go on that. He's tackling that good knockdown there. In on the play, Harold Stevens. I, I believe, again, it was Reebok who, on the lateral pursuit, draws that. It was a first down, however. And again, the Wildcats are on the march. Fraction on the last series of play caused him to put the ball up and uh, ultimately be intercepted. However, they have proven that they can run this ball, and the Trojans, believe me, have a good, sound defense against the running game. There's a call by Gibbs again on the option. Now he keeps the ball, cuts in, has some running room. He jolts it down. There is a flag on the play, in on the tackle for New Prague, Harold Stevens. Have a flag on the field. Now, Wormus Christian 
coming out of the ball game. Reebok talking to the officials, so evidently the penalty was against the Wildcats. It uh, looks on the preliminary call like it's a clip. Reebok still conferring with the official. If it would be a clip, uh, it would be a long yardage penalty. It is a long penalty, a big one, a 15-yarder. Now there is a timeout on the field, and we still not have not. It is a clip against the Wildcats. So there's a timeout on the field in which seven minutes and 14 seconds remaining here in the half, and they score New Craig nothing, and Lucinda nothing. We'll return after this timeout. Back to the action here now. First and 25 for the Wildcats against Woodwell. Now we have wide receivers both ways. Here's the roll out and the ring. First, given to Reynolds. Tries to cut to the outside. Reebok has him. Good pistol by Reebok. Also following on that play, Art Dyke for the Trojans. Harvey Reebok, who has really been in the ballgame this first half defensively for the break. Reebok is the defensive end, and he has Following every play been close, he has not been in on the tackle. He has been right there. So, a loss on the play. Trying to find the original yard marker over on the other side. It's second down. Second down for the Wildcats. Here's a call now. Back is Gibbs. He has some time. He shoots one down the middle. And there's an interception. Why should he care? Once again, now he has no black in the front. Tucks it the other side of the field. Holds it in. And he's going to get blasted down. Why should he care on his second interception of the evening for the Trojans? The ball again overthrown. Now, uh, to my thinking, indicative of the win factor, uh, these young men, especially on the long pass pattern, just, uh, I would imagine, get back and heave the ball, and, and every attempt so far, the ball has been overthrown. Now, this is the second interception by Schinnecker. Ronnie looks like uh, Bobby Bryant out there tonight, huh? Doing a fine job. Ron Schinnecker, uh, Coach John Bush, elected to go with Schinnecker in uh, replacement of Glenn Steinhoff, who has been hurt, and Schinnecker has done a fine job for the Trojans. And now, here's a call, and Hanoff going to Pizak, and he's hit. And what was very successful in the past. It was a fumble, and it was a fumble. Jim Kelly was the man who picked up the fumble. It did not appear from here to be a fumble. Uh, no gain. In fact, the loss in the play, however, the Wildcats have come up with the football. So now the clock continues to run, just under six minutes remaining. Good field position in a new break territory. Woodwell to the right. Split running backs. Gives the call. The handoff goes to Jerry Morrow. Again, Reebok was the man who tripped him up. He crawled for about a yard. We'll see where they placed the ball. Picked up approximately a yard on the play. And the head coach, Jerry Walscott, wants a timeout, and he does get the attention of the officials. So, with five minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the second quarter, and the score, New Craig nothing, and the Wildcats nothing, will return after this timeout. Back to the action now. Gain on the play of a yard for the Wildcats. Now Footwell split to the left side. Here's a call by Gibbs again on the rollout. Eyes looking. Has a man out there. Show them behind him. The man intended was Tim Boschko. Boschko, a flanker for the Wildcats. He's a 165-pound senior. Actually, he was open out there. In fact, again, Wildcats seem to flood that area on the right side of the New Prague defensive secondary. Had about three receivers out there. Roscoe was the intended receiver, and the ball just thrown behind him. So it's an incomplete pass. Stops the clock with six, about five minutes and 25 seconds remaining. Again, Footwell to the left side in the slot, the running back. 
for a healthy pass. Shot out and it's up to the Oh my God. He had the black air in front of him and he dived. He threw an interception at so high. When he saw the defense set up, cracked one of the Wildcats at number 65, or the center. Bill Critic is down and he's hurt. Hit on the face as so high for the Trojans on the third interception. Bringing the Trojans again into good field position. Now we have not seen a timeout assessed in the ball game, but uh, I'm sure we're going to have it. And now we do have a timeout. Well, so far, the passing attempts uh, for Lee Center, I think they're 0 for 5 with three interceptions. Yes, uh, Gibbs is not getting the ball uh, where he wants it. And uh, just a uh, matter of not throwing the ball in the right place. He seems to have people that uh, apparently are open, just not throwing it to him. And a, like just a wide open interception. This has been the third interception and actually good catches, but uh, really. Uh, not outstanding defensive in the fact that they're not taking the ball away from him, but they're just catching it, which is okay, fine and dandy. Now the man hurt, Krennic still laying on the ground, and uh, it's apparent that he has a facial type injury, is, uh, and he seems to be hurt uh, in pain. So we are waiting uh, to find out the extent Oh, he's hurt. Put on him, and he just more or less put the ball up for grabs. And uh, just a matter of 
bad timing on the part of the Trojans because they had two defenders back there who were both capable of intercepting that football. It did not happen. Goes in an incomplete pass. Second down now and 10 again. Footwell put on the right side. Here's a call on the option. And that delay, giving up the gut. Goes to Grotto. First man on the tackle for the Trojans, Conley. Also, Sohide bumps him down. Pick up on the play. Steve Bender in on that tackle also. Pick up on the play. Close to four yards. Out now to about the close to the 20-yard line. Third down and five now for the Wildcats. Again, this will be a big play for the center. As Gibbs, following the signals, just over two minutes remain. Here's the handoff going to Morrow. And Morrow is going to go for the first down. Morrow appeared to be held behind uh, what would be a bad first down. However, he just put his head down in all the yard that he needed. You have to give credit. Fairly to him because he fought his way to get it. In on the tackle. So high for the Trojans. It is a first down and the clock continues to run now. Under two minutes remain in the first half in a scarlet ball game. Here's a call by Gibbs. Now he looks. He had his old man away. And while intended for his wide receiver, number 24 Footwell, and uh, he just lost the ball. Seemed as though a uh, little mix up in the backfield there that uh, one of Gibbs' own people got in his way. And uh, Harvey, he didn't get the ball to his intended receiver. Couldn't hold it for an incomplete pass. Stops the clock now with a minute and 45 seconds remaining here in the first half. Atlas Center. Oh, overcast evening. Here's the snap. In the call. Now Gibbs straight back again. The rush is on. Get the ball away. And again, Schoeniger. No, check that. It was Stevens. I thought it was Schoeniger. Stevens tried to set up for the interception. However, uh, Gibbs had a little more stuff on it than uh, Stevens anticipated. The ball went over his head, also over the head of his intended receiver. Deep on a, just a post-type pattern down the middle. In stopping the clock now. A minute and 37 seconds remaining in the first half. And the Lucinda High School band uh, awaiting halftime to perform here for the fans. We have a good crowd on in. Excellent crowd here at the center. Here's the call. The handoff going to Morrow. And he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. The man in on that tackle. Terry Conley. Terry Conley, one of the outstanding defensive people I have seen for the Trojans this season. Uh, I say that uh, with all respect to the other Trojans, it's just a matter of Conley's sure effective tackling. When he gets a man, he knocks him down. There's no other way to say it. Now in one formation for the Wildcats, Gibbs back deep in single safety for Dupre. To Stevens, a low center, and he gets it away. A good kick over the head of Stevens. He'll take it on the fly. He does. Now he tries to turn the field, and he's going to be banged down. He tried to change direction, and uh, uh, absolutely... Either poor front coverage by New Prague or good by the center. There was nothing but purple jerseys down there, and Stevens had uh, no alternative but to just try to go up the gut, so to speak. Uh, the Trojans have it now, and the clock is con- now the clock is stopped. Now there are 50 seconds remaining here in the first half. It is a scoreless ball game. There is a flag on the play, and the walkoff is against. The listener Wildcats. It is a 15 yarder against the Wildcats, and we have had a penalized first half type ball game. Now they're talking to the Wildcats, and the indication is a personal foul against Lissiter. Now out of the huddle come the Trojans. Ron Catterlick, the center, over the ball. Uh, they came out of the huddle. Now they'll go back in, and there seems to be some mix-up. Trojans go back, re-huddle, and uh, I believe they have a timeout call here. 
Well, the mix-up uh, really wasn't a mix-up there. Uh, Jerry uh, wanted to find out from the official what the personal foul was all about, I guess. So the other official just held up play until uh, he had a discussion with the uh, linesman. Now the clock is put into action. Out of the huddle, the Trojans. Now they are using valuable seconds. Here they come. There are under 40 seconds remaining. Again, so wide, far to the right. Quarterback is Proshek. Here's the call. Now to Hanov going to Conley. Pick up on the play of about three or four yards. No, nope, it was Stevens, the ball carrier. Harold Stevens. Tried to slant into the right side of the center line. Got a couple yards, and the clock is running now. 13 seconds. This very well could be the last play. Under 10 seconds, the clock continues to run. Here's a call by Proshek, and the ball now given to Conley. Nice his way. He picked up about three yards, and there is the end of the first half. So here at the finish, after two periods of play, and the score to Fred Nothing, and Lucinda Center Nothing, will be turned after this timeout. Start the fourth quarter here. The Trojans knocking on the door again. First and ten now from about the 18. Here's the option. Brosha keeps it. It's behind the line of scrimmage and he finds some running room and he's melted down. Pick up on the play. Good for about four yards. Brosha hits behind the line of scrimmage. The man who finished him off was Timmy Blaschko. We'll give him three yards in the play. It is second down and seven now. The ball on about the 16-yard line. Again, Solheide will split to the right in the wishbone of the Trojans. Here's the call by Prusik. And the half goes to Conley, and he powers his way. Very Conley goes close to the first down. It is a first down, and that was second effort by Conley. He had a good opening. Gives a lot of credit due to the forward wall on the left side of the New Prairie offensive line as he opened the hole. But then Conley was hit after he crossed the line of scrimmage. Just powered his way for the first down. Inside the 10-yard line, now it'll be on about the eighth first and goal for the Trojans. Colhide again playing to the right in the slot is Conley. And the call, a quick hand out for to Stevens. Got about two yards, and he was melted down by number 75. Doug Lukish was the man on the tackle for the center. Give him two yards in the play, second and goal from about the six now. Out of the huddle, Ron Catterlick over the ball for New Craig. Again, Solheide is the flanker. And the wishbone in the backfield. Here's the call. And I'm going to Conley. Dives his way. White said he goes for about three yards. And on the tackle for the center, Bill Krennic. Clock continues to run. Just on over 10 minutes here in the ballgame. The Trojans out in front in a hard spot ballgame. At the center. They're ahead six to nothing. On about the four yard line now. Third and goal from the floor. Here's a call by Proshek. And off again to Conley. Trying to follow his traffic and he's belted down. Good play by the center on the tackle. Number 80 was the man initially. Bradley. Conley. They give his forward progress to about the three or four yard line. Give him about a yard. And a timeout is called. So here at the center, in an exciting football game, the Trojans out in front, six to nothing, will return after this timeout. All right, back to the action now. It's fourth and goal from about the three. Here's Proshek's call, a quick dive. Oh, it's a fake. And Harold Stevens. I'll tell you what. Proshek fakes. He almost out of his microphone, but he fakes the holy center 11 out. And Harold Stevens absolutely walked into the end zone for the touchdown. A good call. Came to Bezek, his big man, the first man through on the fake. 
And then second man, Stevens, with Conley to block. Went around him. Good for the touchdown. And the Trojans now have added six more points. They're ahead of this ball game, 12 to nothing. Al Bezik to try for the extra point. High snap. The kick is up. It is no good. Again, Prochik had time to set the, had a problem setting the ball down, and uh, it ended up in a point after not good. So here at the center, with four minutes and 32, kick that, nine minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the final period, and a score that Trojans 12 and the center nothing will return after this timeout. Still play with Al Bezek to kick off. He has a win on his back. Here's his kick off. Beautiful. End over kick. End over end kick. Kicked into the end zone. Al Bezek got his leg into that. And uh, he did exactly what I'm sure coach, head coach John Bush wanted him to do. Not allow them to return it. So the Wildcats now will have it. First and 10 on their own 20 yard line. Trojans out in front here in the fourth quarter. 12 to nothing. As two touchdowns here in the second half. It was a scoreless first half, a hard spot first half. And the Wildcats had contained the running game on this break in that first half. However, they have seemed to loosen them up a little bit right now. Here's the handoff. Second man through. We have a new quarterback. Kermshine is quarterbacking, and Gibbs has moved to a running back. He was the ball carrier. Pick up on the play, close to three yards now. Out on about the 23-yard line, second down and seven for the Wildcats. Out of the huddle comes the Wildcats. Again, split tailback, flanker to the right. Here's a call by Germshide. Now the swing goes to Gibbs again. He'll try to run to the outside. Pass down running room. Close to the 40-yard line, out at about the 38-yard line on the pitch out from Germshide. Wayne Germshide, 150-pound junior quarterback. And the Wildcats have had an injury on the field. Now the injured man off the field for the Wildcats. Again, Germshide is still a quarterback. Now on the rollout, on the option, keeps the football. Runs goes for about four yards. And on the tackle for the break, our Deitch. So the Wildcats here late in the ball game are going now, like I said, to the ball game against the win, and this win is an important factor as far as their passing game is concerned. It is a stiff win, I would imagine. 15, close to 18 miles an hour. Six minutes, just over six minutes remain in this ball game. Here's a call by Germshide. The swing goes again to Gibbs, and he's nice down. Good tackle. So high was responsible for turning him in, and then Wormiskirchen came back and zoomed him down. Ball close to the 45-yard line. It'll be a third down situation, and about four for the Wildcats. Now, Woodwell, the wide receiver, flanked far to the left. Turns by the quarterback. Here's the call. Now on the option again. He rolls nice, swings it out, has little. And what I have said before is very indicative of the Trojans as they are a good one-on-one -on -one tackling team this year. Very impressive to me as Ron Schinnaker took him all by himself. Pick up on the play two yards. It'll be fourth down. Give him three yards. Fourth down and a short yard to go. In fact, the officials want to measure. Is that close? However, I am sure they'll be short. However, uh, a good play by Ronnie Schinnaker as it appeared that Runholtz would have the first down easy. Schinnaker met him, knocked him down, and now we'll have to wait the measurement. Chain is down, and the measurement, they're about... Oh, they are good for a first down! I just was... Really picked out. It didn't appear at all that it would be a first down. It is good for a first down and the Wildcats. On the move. Clock continues to run, however. 
just over seven minutes. I might have given you the wrong time, and the clock here in the center is hard to read. There's a pitch out, and Gibbs almost goes over his head. Knocks out of bounds again over on the far side of the field. I think it was Hal Stevens, the man responsible for knocking him out of bounds. Pick up on the play of about five yards. Second and five now for the center. In on the play of five yards. The center moving the ball effectively down the ground. However, time being the all-important factor for them as the Trojans are leading in this ball game 12 to nothing. And the wind continues to gust right now. It is much stronger than it was at the onset of this ball game. Here's a call again by Germscheid on the quick opener to the left side of the New Prague line. Good for about a yard or two. Worm excursion got a hand on Reynolds, who was the ball carrier. Pick up on the play of about two yards. Gain on the play. Two. We'll give him two. Third down on three for the center. Six minutes and 40 seconds remain in this ball game. Now we have the officials stop the clock. Now they'll start it in progress again. There's a call by Grimshide, and it is a first down for the center. He Grenholtz again, the ball carrier. And on the tackle for New Prague, Wayne B uh, check that Steve Bender. Into New Prague territory to the 39-yard line. As the center moving the ball. I am against him, however, I think that they will almost have to put the ball in the air. There's just about six minutes to play. Now, here's a, on the, whether it's a lateral or not, it's a fumble, and the Wildcats have it, and there's a flag on the play. There is a personal foul call against the Trojans, I believe. On the option, Herbscheidt. Pitch it out. It was knocked down by a Trojan, then a fight for the football. And personal foul. Bring up the second down and five. Against the Trojans. So the penalty takes the ball up to about second down now and five for the center. Again, Dermshide, the quarterback. On the swing, goes to Gibbs. Now he's looking to throw, and the rush is on. Terry Conley was the man responsible to break that play up. Gibbs, on the old Green Bay special, the option play with the pitch to the running back, who, if he's capable, can throw the football. And uh, uh, Gibbs appeared to have a man in the open out there. And Terry Conley come in and belted him down, knocked the pass off its course, incomplete. And now we have third down. Big play for the center. Here's the pitch again to Gibbs. He'll try to run to the outside. Being chased. And he gets by. Number 71, Wormus Gershon, who pounds the turf in disgust as he thought he should have had him. In on the play of about four yards. Now it's going to bring out fourth down and a long one. For the center. Big play. This play could either make or break the Wildcats as far as staying in this ballgame. If they do not make it, it will be awful tough for them to come back for two touchdowns. If they do, however, they still have time. Here's a call by Germscheid. And the handout on a quick opener, and I think he has the first down. Ball resting now on the new break. 29-yard line, first and 10 Wildcats. Woodwell went to the left. Here's a call, and a opener given to Jim. Good shot to the left side of the Prairie line on the buck land pattern. And the Wildcats will have to do something other than what they're doing if they want to give a shot at this ballgame. The clock continues to run. There's four minutes and 45 seconds remaining. And the Trojans out in front here at the center, 12 to nothing. Again, Skirmscheid. Calls the play, a loose football, and there's a fumble. 
And the Trojans have it. And there is a flag again on the play. Now the indication given by the official. We're going to have to see what an amount did is against the Trojans. Now I will have to see what has taken place here. I was sure that the Trojans had recovered the ball. Now the official calls for a timeout. They're going to get things straight on the field. And there is a mix-up of really what is going on. It is the Trojans football. It was a penalty assessed against the Trojans. However, they did recover the fumble, so a penalty personal foul again, and uh, there has been some emotions in this ballgame. Uh, two tough football teams at uh, this stage of the game feeling kind of a natural thing, I would imagine. Uh, things like this do happen, however, nothing serious. It is the Trojan ball on the fumble there. First and ten now from their own 12-yard line. And now we have a return to the huddle as the officials seem to have a problem here to organize continuous play. Now the clock will start to run. Four minutes and 26 seconds remaining in this ball game. The Trojans out in front, 12 to nothing. So high. The wide receiver. Split to the right side. Full house the backfield. Proshek is the quarterback. Here's the call. The handout goes to Conley. Dives his way for about eight yards. Terry Conley. Who has played sensational defensive football for New Prague. And the, on the running back position. Nice his way. Good. For the. Check that. I have jerseys in front of me. It's very close to a first down. Second down, he's not good, about uh, second and three now. Ball over the 20-yard line on about the 22. Here's the handoff, given to Al Bezik. Tries to plow his way, and he's belted down. Good defensive play by the center. Tim Kelly was the man who led the attack for the center. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and three now for the Trojans. However, the ever-important factor, the clock continuing to run. Three minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this ballgame now. So high again, the wide receiver split to the right in the backfield of full house. Here's the call. The ball given to Conley again. Touch to the left side. And he goes into the fumble. And the walk at Al picks it up. There's a flag on the play. The flag on the play. Conley has fumbled the football. He covered by the center. Now the Gibbs for the center talking to the officials. It is a penalty against offside. Holy penalty against New Prague. Declined. So now the center will have the ball. First and ten. Good field position here on about the 29-yard line of New Prague. Just over three minutes remain in this ball game. Wildcats, an apparent mix-up in the back. Now they're settled. They'll come out. The clock, they have to go now if they want to go. Still unsettled. Here's the call. Mike Gibbs, quick hand off to Gordon. Oh, there's a fumble and the Trojans have it. Gibbs, back at quarterback on the hand off to Gordon. Oh, and he popped the line for about three yards and just tossed the ball up and... Uh, one of the Trojans fell on it. No problem at all. Now it's back to New Prague. I think that was Proshek uh, picked up that fumble. Now the clock again will run, and there are two minutes and about 20 seconds remaining. And if the Trojans can contain the football right now, they have this ball game without a doubt. Proshek on the call. Here's the handoff. The Conley same play again. Sweeps that. Right side, gets over the right tackle and then tries to spurt to the outside. Picked up about two yards in the play. Clock continuing to run. Now there's two minutes remaining. Moyer 
Was the man in on the tackle, and now six that I thought the Wildcats would call a timeout. However, they have decided to leave the clock run, and it is continuing to run. A minute and 45 seconds remaining. Trojans not in any hurry at all right now. Brochek takes them out on the count, keeps the ball, dives, and picks up about four yards. Good dive by Brochek as he got help from his own people there. And on the tackle for the Wildcats. Tom Muir. Tom Muir was the first man to hit him, and then, of course, he was helped out by his own teammates. The clock still running. And it is 10 seconds. And if the Wildcats do not elect to call a timeout here, about two more plays, the ball game is over. And you'd have to say, in all reality, the Trojans have this thing wrapped up. Here's Brochet. And the call, a handoff to Conley again to that side of the line. They go to the right side of the defensive line up the center. Good for a first down. Might have been out of bounds. Clock is stopped now. 46 seconds remain. It is a first down, and Terry Conley showing his versatility as he can go both ways. Sound defensive, and he's been very effective running this evening at the center. 12 to nothing, the Trojans out in front now as the clock continues to run. There's 33 seconds. The call by Brochek, the quick handoff going to Bezik. And not much yardage there. Pick up on the play of about two yards. Al Bezik, the ball carrier. Woodwell in on the tackle for the center. Now the clock continues to run. Nine. It'll run out. There will not be another play. And the Trojans have won this football game. There is the end of the ball game. And it'll lead it to Craig Finch and fans. Show their ecstasy as they come out to greet all the hardworking Trojans. Good relationship on the field as the players exchange. Handshakes. So here at the center, with the final score, the New Prague Trojans 12 and the Le Center Wildcats nothing, will return after this timeout. Had a chance to talk to Coach John Bush of New Prague right after the ball game. John, how do you characterize this ball game? Well, it was hard fought. Uh, I think we definitely had the breaks and the critical penalties and pass interceptions, and we fumbled when it was serious down and deep in our territory, but uh, they get right back to us. What seemed to be the problem with the guys uh, on defense in that first half? Well, I think the problem is the, what I consider real outstanding center line. Those kids are off the ball and quick, and uh, I'm just very impressed with them. We're a little bit slower than they are, and, and they came at us tough. And I think it's not necessarily our defensive breakdown. It was their good offensive charge. Did you purposely go at the uh, right side of their line in the second half? Yes. Yes, the way they were lined, and then the person on the head over there, we thought we'd do better there. You know, we were watching the play over here when Connolly scored that first touchdown, but somebody threw a block in there. We didn't catch who it was, but somebody threw a spectacular block that uh, made that whole play. I can't, uh, it was away from me, so I can't see it, but on the play, the end blocked down on the first man on the inside. And then the halfback, Harold Stevens, kicked out on their outside defender, and then Bezik leads through. Now, who got the block? I don't know, but those are the three pretty critical blocks in that play. Was it this just about the type of game you expected, John? No, I thought it'd be more scoring. I thought uh, last week wasn't what I expected. This week is, and I just, I don't think you can anticipate for sure what'll happen. Always a surprise, huh? I, definitely. Thank you much. John Butch, Coach uh, Bush, Coach at New Prague. This is Don Perry inviting you to be back with us for more Trojan football. We'll be back at our regular time, 9 o'clock next Saturday morning. Join us for Trojan football with me and Raleigh Nash here on KTMF. Thanks, Mike.